of the earth they live and they die presidents come into office after a while they leave but you are the ancient of days your kingdom is forever and ever and ever and ever there is none to be compared with you you alone are God Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for giving us the privilege of seeing the 22nd of November 2024. You alone watched over us, fought battles on our behalf. You were awake while we slept. You ensured that your goodness was not removed from us. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for your love, so deep and so wide. It is beyond human understanding. Thank you for your mercies that are brand new every day. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you. Words are not enough to express the gratitude filled in our hearts thank you for the precious blood of our Lord Jesus thank you for granting us access into your presence thank you for the gift of your spirit thank you sweet wonderful Holy Spirit nothing can be done that is acceptable unto the Father except by you Tonight we've gathered not unto a man, but we've gathered in the presence of our God. And we humble ourselves, we ask, Lord, help us. Open our eyes of understanding. Let there be light. Take these precious words of our Lord Jesus. Break them down in so simple formats that even a baby in our midst can relate to. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. I thank you for your help tonight. None of us will leave this place the same. Answer the questions, demystify things, make things clear for each and every one of us. And most importantly, the grace to be doers of your word and not just hear us thank you lord we exalt you for we have praised we've worshiped and we've prayed in jesus mighty name and let all that are alive tonight give jesus praise hallelujah good evening Please say hi to someone even as you take your seat. Appreciate someone. Let the person know that you're glad that they're in service tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have been looking at faith for undeniable results. Amen. Um, 
and we started this two Fridays ago. And on the first night, we examined that faith is built on the word of God and that God has made provision for us by his word. And within the context and the boundaries of God's word, you have everything that you will ever need. And that if you're going to walk in faith and believe God for anything, you make sure that it is in line with God's word. Praise God. Irrespective of what anybody's opinion is, at the end of the day, it is the word of God that counts. Amen. God will not back anyone um, in anything that is outside of his word. And it's important that we settled that truth and built on it. And last Friday, we looked at the integrity of God. And we established that our God is a God of integrity. And that if you stand on his word, God will do everything to ensure that his word does not return to him void. Amen? So if anybody's building at any point in time, you build on the word of God. We looked at different scriptures and, and we looked at a whole lot to establish that truth that God is worthy of trust and that if it came out of his mouth, you can take it to the bank. Amen? Okay, now we also established that God is not your uncle in Chicago. Praise God. Okay, if you wonder what that means, it simply means that God is not a human being. Humans can disappoint. Humans can wake up one day and change their minds about something. When God gives you his word, it is established. Amen? And it's important that in this day and age, when there are so many things that are changing and shifting, that we make up our mind again and again to build on God's word. Please, don't build on what somebody said. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I know there are people like, ah, my pastor said it. That settles it. What your pastor said had better be in line with God's word. <laughs> if not, you and your pastor will be in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, 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 the office of the man of God only has power if he is in line with the one that has called him. Are you getting this? So it's very, very important that you understand how this works. Okay, so that's why I tell you every time, if I tell you something that is not in the Bible, what do you do to it? Throw it away. Amen? Okay, so you have the right to be like, this thing pastor is teaching, where is it in the Bible? <laughs> and if it's not there, man, run. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. And today we're going to be looking at something that is very important, very practical, yet very, very important. And um, it affects every one of us. And I trust God to give us a capsule that will be easy for us to relate with and will grant us understanding. So I had a story about a group of Christians that went for a retreat. And they went for this retreat in a deserted place. And they had been there waiting on God, praying, fasting for a while. And um, the weather also happens to be hot. So, it didn't even help. But there was this brother in their midst that was very, very dedicated and intense in his prayer. 
and he kept praying and he has been fasting for days and praying. Um, but somewhere in the middle of the prayer, he collapsed and he, he fell out, you know, and thank God for doctors and there was, there were doctors there with them and they checked him and realized that he was dehydrated. He hadn't um, taken water in a while. So somehow they were able to resuscitate him, you know, if they had fans and things, and to the glory of God, he was able to get up. And they explained to him what the problem they think was. So they brought him a bottle of water. Now, being a man of faith, when they brought him the bottle of water, he declared, I believe that if I drink this water, I will be made whole. And the guys there shouted, Amen. And he declared again, I believe that if I drink this water, I will be made whole. And the people shouted, what? And he declared a third time. And this time around, he got emotional. And he added some flair to it. And he declared, I believe. That if I drink this water, I will be made whole. And the people shouted, what? And he fainted. I'm quiet for a reason, because I want the coin to drop. What was the problem? The water was there. He had faith. He believed. He confessed. The water was very close. Yet he fainted. Why did it not work for him? I can't hear you. Why? So I want to show you a scripture. Put this for me in the New Century version, the NCV version. James chapter 2, verse 14. Let me know when it's on the screen. Can you guys see it? I want us to read this together. Everybody ready? Read. Will it be possible for me to ask you to read this a second time? Will you, would that be okay with you? Please read it one more time. I think we've preached and I can close the service. We've been looking at faith for undeniable results. And there's a problem that I've seen, especially among Christians, where we have, you know, in cars, you have four cylinders, you, you have V6, six cylinders, 
you have V8. Then you have the V12, 12 cylinder cars. And there are cars that are even beyond that, you know, depending. Now, no matter what the engine of the car is, how big it is, and no matter how much the car can rave, if you do not engage drive, there will be a lot of noise, but you're not going anywhere. So there's a disconnect with Christians. We talk a lot. We confess a lot. We have this big engine. We even say we have faith. We have the spirit of God. There's no engine bigger than that. Find me a clip of a raving car. Put it on the screen, please. Let it rave. Increase the volume. Can it rave again? You see where, how everywhere is shaking? Everywhere shaking. There's, there's even fire coming out. Look at it one more time. Rave. There's fire. Literal fire. He said the power of God was in the service. Hey, I felt it. <laughs> After all the power, Monday to Friday, nothing to show for it. Because even though the Holy Spirit was there, the power of God was, was there, there was the anointing of God Without corresponding action, you have nothing. That type of faith that does not propel you to do something about what you're believing for is not from God. So we made available here a sheet of paper on the guidance if you're having your faith petition, you're trusting God for something. And first it says, we desire, so this is an example of somebody that is trusting God for a house, for instance. Okay, it says, we desire a house and to no longer live in an apartment. Okay, good. And they describe the type of house and the price. Awesome. Then the next thing, they anchored it on a scripture. Amen. That's beautiful too, because if it's not based on God's word, you're completely on your own. Okay, so it's anchored on a scripture. Awesome. Then there's the daily declarations. I thank you, Lord, for we have received our home. And I thank you that as we listen to the Holy Spirit, we are directed on where to capture our home. This is important, because until God speaks, you have nothing to act on. Now, but the moment you're listening and God has told you what to do, it is no longer in God's hand. God has nothing to confirm if you're not willing to act. Did you hear what I said? Oh, by the way, there's something I have not told you guys today. Let me find it. Do you know what it is? You know what it is. I want to be sure that those people are in church. Did I let you know that I pastor a thriving church of godly, kingdom-minded, heaven-bound millionaires? Are they in service tonight? Okay, I just wanted to be sure. So I'm talking to the right set of people. Hallelujah. Now, the people that are going to see results, must be willing to act. Okay, they're passing out. I assumed you guys have this. We shared this weeks ago. So you should have it. And on the back of it is where you put what you're working on, your faith project. That you're working. But if you don't have it, please, make sure that somebody gets it. Amen. But look at the last 
thing here on this sheet of paper is your plan of what? Action. Somebody say plan of action. Say it one more time. My plan of action. So in other words, see, your faith is not complete until you get to the point of action. That point of action is where the rubber meets the road. Amen? So the same way that a revving car sounds good, might sound intimidating, might... You know there are these things they do on cars that makes it sound loud, but they're not going anywhere. I think last, last Friday I left church and I was driving home, and there was a guy by my side, and uh, we were at the red light, and the guy was raving. Almost like he was daring me, can we do this? Please don't yield to that temptation. Uh, Pastor Deca was always laughing at me over it. He's like, man, boys, guys are just boys. Because there was one day, I was there and there was this guy, and the guy looked at me, looked at the car, and he did like this, like... <laughs> Uh, um, let me not tell you what happened. Because since I told my wife that, she has held it over my head. So I'll just keep quiet, you know. All I can say was that he was the one that started it. And I finished it for him. So <laughs> it's all good. We'll, we'll let that one be. <laughs> But you know how, no matter how much a car is revving, if you don't engage drive, you're going to be stagnated. You're going to remain on the same spot. And the sad thing about it is that when that happens, a lot of us end up blaming God for something that has nothing to do with him, but is purely due to our own inaction. So we read that scripture, that James chapter 2, verse 14. Now, I want you, because of time, there's something to cover. Let's go to the verse 20 of it. James chapter 2, verse 20. Same, tra uh, same translation. Look at what it says. It says, you foolish person, must you be shown that faith that does nothing is worth what? Nothing. So faith that is not willing to act is useless. So if there's anything like useless faith, if you're trying to find out, if there's anything like that, this is it. The Bible says that even the demons, they believe in God and they tremble. At least there's a shaking. Their believing made them shake. But the Christian that believes but does nothing makes a caricature of himself and of God's word. Faith can be seen by what you do. So the last line here says, since we are believing for a house, then I must look, look, and what? Look. You don't sit on your bed and be like, if it is the will of God, for us to have a house, he will just bless us with work. That's not how life works. Not only do you look, look and look, he says you get a, a realtor who believes that what we believe so they can help you. You check all the home websites, you talk to people, you follow the lead. All these things are corresponding action. And while I was reading this, something came to my mind too. If your credit is messed up, do something about it. Because all this, ah, my credit is five fourth, but the Lord would do it. While you burn through everything and, okay, I'm not teaching on finances, so let me come out from there. Let me, I'm done with that. Go through the series. Amen? Go through that. Now, but there's something about action here. 
action without hearing from God is useless. Because I've seen Christians that do that. They go into works without divine direction. So they start harassing people. They start talking to everybody, but they are not hearing from God first. Listen, action only makes sense after you've heard from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. Let me give you a practical example. When the Israelites got to the Red Sea, they cried to God, right? And uh, what did God say? He said to Moses, tell them to do what? Move forward. That was the prophetic word given to them by God. In other words, as long as they move forward into the waters, standing on God's word, they will have divine backing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Did they walk through the Red Sea? According to that scripture, they did, right? But there's another group of people that were the Egyptians that followed them into the Red Sea. What happened to them? Why? But it's the same Red Sea. It obeyed the Israel. It ought to, after all, we are all humans. It should also obey us. Did God ask you to enter? Actually, God told them, let them go. Don't follow them. And they're like, no, we're following them. Now the Red Sea parted for one group, drowned the other group. The same Red Sea. Because of divine instruction. Because, see, anytime I teach, it's important that I create this balance. Because there are some of us, I don't know why Christians always tilt to one side. So you have one group that are like, man, we're not going to do anything. If God wants to do it, he'll do it for us. We'll just wait on him forever. They lose out. Then there's the group that never wait to hear from God. Everything is man. Ah, somehow, somehow, something will happen. So they do everything with action without listening to God. So there's a lot of activity, but no result. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Don't be on either side. If you've ever tried driving a car that does not have oil in the engine, if you've ever done something like that, you see that everywhere is heated up. That's how it is with people that run around without hearing from God first. There's a lot of action, but so much heat and little progress. So let me explain to you how it works. You hear from God, Father, what should I do? He tells you what to do. Then you get up and go what? And do it. So, um, Dr. Chinedu was leading prayers tonight, and he called John chapter 2, verse 5. That's the scripture that Mary preached. And it was a very simple preaching. And she said to them, do whatever, what? He tells you to do. Can you help me tell your neighbor that? Just tell the person, neighbor, whatever God tells you to do, just do that. Please don't add to it. Don't subtract from it. But did you notice that this is an action word? It didn't say whatever God, uh, God tells to you, man, publish it on social media. Discuss it with everybody. Then post it everywhere and don't do anything. So there are Christians that I see, they are talking. Ah, my God, who this? Ah, this is my year of X, Y, Z. And they are on their couch. And they are like, I, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. The Lord will do it. That's not how it works. Say with me, corresponding action. In line with divine direction. So do you know one of the most important things you can do as a Christian is to hear from God. Let me tell you why set and fight our prayer time. 
He does not want you to spend time with God to hear from him what you should do. He prefers that we're everywhere, all over the place, but we never sit in his presence. Because when you sit before God, you hear from him, and because his word carries divine backing, when you step out to obey his word, his word is already blessed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So you're not wondering, would this succeed? If God told you, then step out on it. Even if there's opposition, stand your ground, knowing that God told you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Which is why it's important that in your walk of faith, you hear from God. And every child of God can hear from God. Repeat it with me. Every child of God can hear from God. Hearing from God is not for some special people. It's for every child of God. Say this with me. The word of God says, my sheep hear my voice. I am God's sheep. I hear his voice. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So anytime you're facing something, sit in his presence. Open the scripture. Remind him, Lord, this is what you said. My sheep hear my voice. I am your sheep. I expect to hear from you. Then sit there and start studying. If you need to pray, pray, listening to him. But the moment the Lord has spoken to you, Get up and go and obey. Amen? Get up and go and what? Obey. There's no need singing about how you believe that if you drink this water, you'll be made whole. That's useless. Just drink. Amen? Do something. Praise God. Okay. Go with me, King James translation, Luke chapter 17, verse 12. Luke chapter 17, verse 12, King James translation. Let's run, please. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass uh, that as they went, they were cleansed. Please, I want you to highlight that word, as they went. They were cleansed. They were not cleansed being stationary. They were cleansed when they began to obey. There is something in faith called the point of no return. When you step out to obey God, that is where the power of God kicks in. God is not obligated to do anything if you are not willing to step out and obey him. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So watch this. As they went, they were what? Cleansed. Not as they were there evaluating it. By the way, if you've studied this place, you realize that the instruction Jesus gave them was a risky one. A risky one. According to the book of Leviticus, if you're a leper, you're not supposed to be around people because the sickness they had was infectious. So you could get other people infected by that. So according to the law, you're meant to stay in the outskirts of the town. Now Jesus is walking in and they say, Lord Jesus, help us. And he gives them an instruction. He says, go straight and show yourselves to the priest. Where is the priest? In the temple. Where is the temple? In the middle of the city. In other words, Jesus, can't you change this thing? Uh, he lost, then we can go. No, he said, you go. That is the instruction. That is God's word. So the Bible said they took that risk as they went. What happened? They were healed. As they obeyed, they were healed. If they had said, um, Lord, Lord, um, are you new in town? Don't you realize that when they see people there, they are going to stone them? What do you mean, go show yourself? Do you want us to die? We are asking for healing. You are trying to kill us. Huh? Heal us, then we can go. No. Go show yourselves to the priests. 
as they acted. There's a translation called the YLT translation. Let me show you that verse 14 in YLT. Please, if you guys can find it and put it here. Look at it. He said, and having seen them, he said to them, having gone on, show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass in their going. They were cleansed. Somebody say, in their going. So in the midst of their obedience, it happened. And if you've walked with God, you're going to find seasons when he tells you to do something that you're wondering, man, what are you talking about? Like, okay, Lord, show me a sign. Do something. His word is enough. If he said it to you, there's enough power backing it to bring it to pass. Amen? And it's when you begin to obey him that you see the manifestation of that. Don't be that Christian that, and I was sharing this here. A lady walked up to me years ago. This was more than eight years ago. And said to me, Pastor, I was praying. And the Lord showed me a design of a shoe that I should create. So I was like, man, that's awesome. Tell me about it. And she's like, a lot of ladies like wearing, uh, what do you call it, um, high heels. But also in the course of the day, they get uncomfortable and... That means they have to take it off and now put on something else, you know. But God gave me this idea to design this type of shoes that you can detach the heels if you want. Now, this was over eight years ago. As of the time she was sharing this with me, I had not seen that design or concept anywhere. And man, I was excited. I was more excited than her. Because I was like, this is good. Hey, let's go. Two months later, lady, what's up? What's going on? Say, Pastor, I am, I, am, I am preparing. Six months later, lady, what's up? Pastor, I'm, I'm on it. You now got to a point that she will see me coming in church. She will follow another side. I'm like, what? What are you doing? Man, this thing is, let's go. What do we need to do? I'm like, let's, whatever. And she kept, I will, I will. I think two years later, or around two or three years later, I was watching an advert on TV. And I saw that concept being advertised. Somebody came up with it. When you're downloading something from God, don't think you're the only one. Huh? When God reigns it, whoever is willing to obey will be the one with results. How many things did God reign that you collected and did nothing with? You know, if diaries can talk, Some of us have diaries that are screaming. Because they know the day you wrote it down. But nothing else happened. Say with me, I received the grace to act. I received the grace to be a doer of God's word. Can I hear you say amen? Okay, so this is very, very important. Listen to me. The Bible says that faith comes how? And hearing by what? Okay, there are a lot of people who have been deceived by that statement because they don't understand that, yes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith is not released that way. <sighs> Let's see if I can illustrate something. I'm going to borrow some stuff now. So, um, Dr. Kelechi, come. Um, Dr. Chine, do come too, because two of you, two of you are here. So, um, we're gonna borrow some ladies' bags. So please start zipping them up, because we know what, and you know, praise God. Please, is it zipped? You know, a lady's bag is deep. Never go into a lady's bag. Please. So. Go collecting some. Let's, let's get some. 
If it doesn't zip, please let it be. Get some bags, get some books, get some items. Just get it. Please remember who's on you collected so that there will be peace before we have issues in church. <laughs> huh? We're looking for things. So can we get some? There's a Bible here. Come and collect, sir. Okay. I think that's enough. That's enough to illustrate. Two of you come. I want to show you something. And it's very simple. It's not complicated. I'm always looking for pictures. Sorry, sir. Uh, uh, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> okay, hand everything over to him. Hold. You come out here and stand. So the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So every time this guy studies God's word, he has a teaching, reads his Bible, absorbs God's word, faith does what? Faith comes. Give him one item. So he just had a teaching. Faith has come. Praise God. Then next week, he has another teaching. Faith comes. Give him another one. One more item. Yes. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Keep giving him one more. He's building his faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give him another. Oh, the guy is diligent in study. He's loading himself with the word of God. Look at him. He is filled with faith. Be given unto him. Filled with faith. Be given unto him. Another one. You know that this guy can be so loaded with faith. He can be so loaded with faith. And have zero results. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith is not released by hearing. Did you hear what I said? So you can accumulate all the faith. Do you know you can have all the faith for healing and not be healed? I can show you in the Bible. You can have all the faith for finances and be broke. You can have all the faith for whatever thing it is. Because some of us, we've learned that faith comes by hearing. We've mastered that. But we don't understand how to release faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is released by speaking and by action. Say it with me. Faith is released by speaking and by action. If this guy does not learn to release his faith, he will be so filled with faith and nothing to show for it. In the realm of the spirit, he will be loaded. If you look at him with spiritual eyes, man, the guy is but physically frustrated. Let me show you in the Bible. Go with me to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14 talks about Paul. Look at, I think, from verse 8. Paul was teaching, and there was a guy in that meeting. Hmm? Look at this guy. Now, please, maybe even put this in NLT so that everybody can see it. New Living Translation, I'm waiting. It said, while they were at Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth, so he had never walked. He was sitting. Next verse, verse 9. And listening to Paul, he was listening to Paul preach, looking straight at him, Paul realized that this guy had faith to be healed. How come he wasn't healed? He had faith to be. The guy is loaded. Look at him. Loaded with stuff. Huh? You know the way I function. It's usually like pile some more. Put on. In fact, if I see a way to take this whole glass and put. The guy is loaded. But nothing happened. So when Paul saw him, Paul saw where the problem was. The problem was not in having faith. 
The guy had faith. But the guy didn't know how to release his faith. So see what Paul told him in the next verse, verse 10. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up, action. And what happened? And the man jumped to his feet. It wasn't Paul's faith. The guy was already loaded with faith. Actually, if you look at this, Paul didn't say, in Jesus' name, I pray, I command. No. He just gave the guy an expression to release what he was already carrying. Corresponding action gives you a way to release your faith so that there can be manifestation. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So it's not enough to say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh, I so believe. What are you doing? Nothing. Ah, this year, the Lord told me this year, I will open two companies. Okay. Okay. I'm happy for you. I'm your pastor. I'm excited. Praise God. Oh, Lord, thank you. These are the multimillionaires that we're raising. Amazing. But, sir, if you don't step out to do anything, it will only remain a confession. Amen? Was this illustration simple enough? Do you understand it now? Now, go on distribute back what you got from who. <laughs> Make sure you give everybody their stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Please, I was not the one that took it from you. Please. I, I wasn't even here. So, Praise God. Ah. And my time is up. Okay, thank you, Lord Jesus. There's this thing that happens to me when I come here. I prepare all this meal, and we get here, and we're able to do only 20%, and the time finishes. Back in here, you'll be like, Pastor, preach it. No, I'm not. Stand on your feet. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Go do something with what you learned. Amen? Go and what? Act. Go and act. Go and act. It's time for corresponding action. It's time for corresponding action. What are you believing God for? Faith can be seen. Faith can be seen. How? By what you say and by what you do. When I watch you do stuff, then I know whether you really believe for anything or not. The Bible talks about Jesus at one point went to his house. It was his own house that he went to. If you do a study of that place, he went to his house and people gathered um, to his home for him to minister to them. And um, everywhere was filled up. But there was this guy that was paralyzed from head to toe. And um, his friends brought him, but when, when they got there to the house, everywhere was filled. And instead of them to say, maybe it's not the will of God for you to be healed today. If the Lord wants to do it, the Lord will do it. That wasn't what they said. The Bible said they climbed the roof. Have you imagined climbing the roof, carrying somebody that is fully paralyzed. So each time I study God's word, I trust the Holy Spirit to paint pictures for me. So who went up first? Maybe two climbed, then they found a rope or something to hold him, then the other one, how did they carry him? Did they form a leaf or something to pull him up or did they carry him? Maybe the other two carried him on top of their heads, then climbed on something, then the two that was on top received him. And while that was going on, what level of noise was going on in the house of Jesus where he was ministering? So I want you to picture, I am teaching and there's all this noise. I think it was, um, it was actually yesterday. I was in church in the conference room studying, but those that were changing the roof, they were there. And it was like a war zone. Boom, they, they would run. Then this one. Then they would do. I was like, Lord, help me. <laughs> and they were all over the place. So I was imagining that. So picture Jesus was trying to teach. And there was this so much noise. And when the, the four guys finally got up there, they started removing tiles. 
So there were things falling all over the place and they were pulling. They were not deterred by any of that. They were determined that today is today. Listen, you must be healed today. And after you're healed though, you might spend six months working to pay for his roof. But healing, you're getting it. And, and they were pulling out stuff. They, they began. And when they were done, the Bible said they lowered him. And you look at that place. Jesus said when he saw their faith. How did he see it? By what they did. Huh? Faith has expression. Faith can be seen when you act. Don't tell me you believe and you're not doing anything. If you believe, do something. And listen, let me tell you the truth. The fact that you're acting does not mean that you will not meet opposition. Because you might turn to this door and it doesn't work. Don't be like, eh, this thing is too difficult. If it is the Lord, it won't be this hard. Who told you? There's someone opposing you. There's no place it's written that if God is the one, then everything will just fall on your lap. What's going to be is going to be. You know, if, if God really wants me to have it, he will bring it to me. Did God want you to have your bath today? Eh? Does God want you to smell good? Did the Lord bait you today? There was nobody here. I'm like, okay, who knows? Because <laughs> somebody might be like, Pastor, you don't know. Today, Jesus came into my house and he gave me, a, okay, God bless you, uh, you know. The fact that it is the Lord does not mean that it will be easy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the reassurance that you're in obedience it what is what makes you set your face as a stone determined that I will walk this thing to the end because I know the one that sent me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is the attitude of dominion. You can, listen, you might try the first time and you fail and so what? So what? Like, man, it didn't work, it didn't work. Praise God, tomorrow we'll go at it again. We'll go at it again. The most important thing for me is, Lord, did you say I should? If he said that, I will knock on that door until he yields. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't quit. You make up your mind. If this is God, that I'm staying with it until there's results. That is the attitude. If those guys had said, you can see there's so many people here. There's so much crowd. We really can't get you in. So let's go. That guy wouldn't have been healed. They were determined. And because they were determined, something happened. Is somebody hearing me? Now I want us to pray. What is it, Father? That grace. Doc was already praying along that line. That grace to do. The grace to persevere in obedience and in corresponding action. The grace to persevere, to stay with it, to stay with it, to stay with it until he speaks. That grace to sit on it until there's result. What is that picture? What is that dream that the Lord has given to you? What is that idea that he gave you? Listen, don't allow the enemy abort it. Don't allow Satan steal it from you. Be determined, Lord. Yes, yesterday may not have worked, but I am determined to stay with this until he speaks. In the name of Jesus, I heard your voice. You said I should move forward. Forward, I am moving in the name of Jesus. Somebody open up your mouth and pray. The grace to do, 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 the grace to execute, the diligence of execution. 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 Oh, I am not deterred by what I see. I am not deterred by how I feel. I set my face like a flint, oh Lord, to obey the counsel of the Lord. Yadakashan de 
Kaprodojinde lebosi kete Manta kabaya shanta la labosa Enge brada yande lebosi kete Yabala hande lele kita haya Agabala brodo yanta kata I'm determined in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the strength to stay with it in corresponding action until it speaks in the name of Jesus. and sisters please listen if my goal is to knock down this wall the first time I hit on it it looks like nothing happened but the particles within they shake I hit on it again on the outside it looks like nothing is happening listen if you walk only by sight you'll be discouraged you'll be like this is not working and I quit. But if you stay with it, each time you hit it, something adjusts. Each time you hit it, something adjusts. And while that is going on, guess what? Satan will be by your ear mocking you, telling you it's not working. Why are you wasting your time here? Everybody will laugh at you, look at you. It's not working. Hey, what is he trying to do? Take your attention, of course. Listen to me. There is no thief that goes to steal from an empty warehouse. Are you hearing me? Satan is not a stupid thief. If Satan is talking to you, it means there's something worthy of stealing that he has seen. And that is why he's persevering in talking to you. You may not know, but he knows. Think about it. Oh, if there's no chance of it going down, why are you talking to me then? Leave me to be foolish. Eh? No, but he's trying to see, can he derail you? Stay with it. Stay with it. Do you know it gets to a point, everything is ready, that one little touch, it goes down. It's not that time that it went down. It has been going down since. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At that last point, people will see and be like, ah, I always knew you were going to be this successful. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No. Those days that it looks like nothing is working, that is when you stay with it. Help me tell somebody, stay with it. Be consistent. Be faithful. In season and out of season. Stay with it. It will speak. Are you hearing me? It will speak. It will speak. In the name of Jesus. If I'm talking to people that will experience undeniable results, let them give Jesus praise. me tell somebody I'm looking forward to your testimony I'm looking forward to your testimony amen
when you step out in faith, God has something to confirm. Amen. Bring out your